audio is not the only place that has a reputation for being tough on, on us ladies. And I think there are many kids like that who are born to be record makers. Only 5% of women are in this industry. Ooh. Wow. Women are subjected to some real knuckleheads out there. I was an outsider because I was in a room filled with men. My decades were the 80s and the 90s, and you could count on one hand the prominent women who were engineers and producers in the music business. Feeling blue sometimes. I'm Heather Bay, and I'm a sound engineer. When I was younger, I was really interested in what went into producing records, and I started buying albums and going to shows. I fell in love with concerts and the live environment and was determined to make that a part of my life. I'm a student at SUNY New Paltz in New York and created my own audio production major, and from there I started working in sound on a regular basis. I've been hired for a few jobs as a live and recording engineer and currently work on campus at Studley Theatre. I have been lucky to meet some incredible women in this industry, and I just want people to know that even though there are so few of us, women do exist in the sound industry. I'm always looking to meet new women in this field because there just aren't that many. And um, I came across this mix engineer. She was really cool. Her name was Jess. I started off recording and mixing myself at home. Eventually, it led to my mixing my friends. And once I got to a place of, of realizing that it's something I wanted to pursue professionally, I started just mixing for free. And then after you know a certain point of building a, a solid portfolio, I felt comfortable to start charging people. I take a lot of sound classes, and one of the first ones I took, there was a TA, her name was Kim, and um, most of the classes just meet a bunch of guys, so to have a TA that was a woman was really cool. It's just to see that there's other women doing what I do was really inspiring. In the New Paltz Theater Department, we have to do these things called TAPS, Theater Arts Participations. Found out that there was one where you could help put microphones on people called an A2 and it was entry level, you didn't need any experience. So when I started getting into sound and I was telling my family and my friends like this is what I want to do, I want to be a sound engineer, they were kind of concerned because only 5% of the industry are women, which is not a lot. So, you know, I took that into consideration and I didn't care, like, this is what I want to do. Only 5% of women is bullshit. It should be 50%. 5% is still better than, what it, probably, it was probably 0.0005% when I was starting out, because uh, I remember I was interviewed in the early 90s where they said that the number of women who were working at the highest level making commercial records in the world were, there were five of us. So 5% is better than 5 out of, you know, 1,000, whatever it was. And when we see, <laughs> we would see one another, uh, rather than be competitive, you might think that we would want to stand out. And the, the opposite was true. When we would see one another, we'd do the same thing that uh, toddlers do, like babies do when they go to daycare, and a baby walks in and sees another baby, and it's like, oh, and they, they're attracted to their own kind. I think it's way too low of a number, but I think that's changing. I mean, just for me in the last 12 months, I've seen a, a drastic change in the industry as far as uh, women in, in music and in, or in sound goes. I do feel like it is on the rise. One of my sound professors at New Paltz happens to be a woman, her name is Sunny, and she's been just my biggest supporter in me pursuing a career in sound. She's taught me so much and she's always pushing me to try harder and to try new things and that's just been really incredible for me. After I graduated from college I wanted to work on theater and musicals but I couldn't find anything I could do and then one day I was doing the stage crew. Of course I wanted to be around so I started as a stage crew, assist assistant director, assistant stage management. I just wanted, wanted to be around the industry and then one day we couldn't use the orchestra, and then the sound designer, now he's the best sound designer in South Korea, he was recruiting people, and then he had to use an MD disc, mini disc, MD player, so he had to put four deck to make like live orchestra, so and then he 
asked me to play all the cues because I was an assistant director. I knew all the cues because I was in the room all the time. I didn't know what I was doing, but I played all those cues. And he said, I was on the beat. I was so good at what I was doing. And then he's like, yeah, Sonny, you want to try another show? I became a mix engineer. So musicals, you have to have live sound. So I became a A2 and move on to A1 and worked with um, other engineers from West End and Broadways and I was inspired. I definitely think women have to try harder in this field. The whole having to prove yourself thing and just working harder and going above and beyond just to show that you can do just as much as guys can. Honestly, I'm just not taken seriously right away. You know, there's always the assumption that I don't know what I'm doing and there's confusion as to why I'm in the studio. I, I used to answer the question about obstacles to women in the workplace. I used to answer the question by saying, essentially, Ladies, it's all in your head. If you don't see yourself as not being equal, then you, you, won't, you, won't, you won't have a problem. I was wrong. It's not all in your head. It's partly in your head. You have to go in with an attitude that says, bring it. I come from a background uh, of starting in a college as a student that was an all-girls school. Uh, we had sisters on the faculty. I later joined the Sisters of St. Joseph community. Uh, and. You know, any tenseness or uneasiness uh, I felt in a recording session, uh, you know, being a woman, the producer, some of the musicians, uh, you know, they might look in the control room and think, what am I, what have I got? Uh, as soon as I started working, there was never a question of, you know, my abilities or limitations. I didn't really have to make my way into the marketplace because I started here at St. Rose and was here when we first put the studio in and helped to design the program and then eventually took the program over. So many people came to me. In the early days, we were the only available studio in the area. So we tracked anybody, anything that came in the door just to get the experience and build our knowledge base. So I didn't have the entry problems that I think some of the other women have had and may continue to have. I'm going to keep turning up. You tell me when it's good, okay? Okay. Women are super influential on the sound industry just by showing other people, and specifically other women, that they're out there and they're working in this field. and that, you know, women like me, younger women, can do this too. Delia Derbyshire and Daphne Ora both worked with the BBC Radio Phonic Workshop. Delia Derbyshire, in terms of just developing a process for creating sounds using tape, Daphne Oram was there from the get-go, and besides just being a technological whiz, an engineer, developed her own synthesizer. Adumar invented the frequency hopping system, which is why we have wireless. And wireless more and more is becoming prominent in the sound field because of convenience and just necessity. So it's because of her that we have wireless microphones, wireless speakers, wireless monitors, etc. On the small scale, my professor in college, uh, Sister Marianne Nelson at the College of St. Rose. I direct the music industry program. Uh, we're one of the oldest music industry programs, I think, in the country. We put together the program beginnings in the late 70s. I took the program over in 1981. The sisters are the ones that opened the door for me to jump into this kind of work um, and you know, supported me and tried to understand when I'd be spending many nights all night long in the studio or sleeping in the studio to keep the equipment going uh, so the students could uh, run all night sessions. Uh, so, you know, they were very understanding about that. Uh, but I, I think my whole approach, I can trace back to our roots uh, as Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. The phrase is to serve the dear neighbor, but basically it means 
to be of service to anyone, anywhere, any time, any situation. But no matter where we are or who we are, we are representing a group and a theology and a philosophy of service. Uh, so I've brought that into the workplace. that has influenced me personally and continues to influence me is Susan Rogers. She was the engineer for Prince. She was responsible for Purple Rain and Sign of the Times, which are two of my favorite albums. So just that in general is really awesome to me. Um, and she's been in the field forever. So for her to be the engineer for one of the most famous musicians is just absolutely incredible. And to do it in a time where there was so few women, it's just amazing. I was not able to really embark on that journey until I was 21 years old, but I, I got started by having a roommate who wanted to be a recording engineer as well. And we moved to Hollywood together and we were roommates and she had the money, the $3,000 tuition, to attend a little school called the University of Sound Arts. The teachers were all these uh, engineers and technicians who were some of the best in the world. Uh, I couldn't afford to go there, but my roommate got me the job as the night receptionist and I, I would be there and I would see these teachers come in and out and I would help you know do the filing and the paperwork and then I heard a sentence that changed my life there was a a teacher there who was a maintenance technician and he told one of the students he said to the kid um, if you always want to have a job become a maintenance tech So being a woman in the sound industry and being really interested in live sound and pursuing live sound, an organization that has really helped me and has been inspiring to me is Sound Girls. Um, they are an organization that promotes gender equality within the sound industry as well as provides like a, a safe space for women to talk about their experiences and to network. And they also have workshops that have been really great for me and for other women and men as well. So having them as a support system has been absolutely amazing. And then there's this uh, more of a recent group called Female Frequency, who I, I'm a part of. And that's more about generating female produced EPs as a way of empowering and inspiring uh, not just women artists, but women in the production side of it as well. So with Women's Audio Mission, Sound Girls, and Female Frequency, they're showing other women that, like, hey, we're here too, you can do this too. a local recording studio, well-known, looking for an intern. And I had all the requirements, the experience. I mean, every bullet point they listed, I, I checked off. And so I submitted my name, my availability, whatever. And the guy called and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like they, they called, right? He's like, so you want to be an intern here? And I, and I could feel the vibe of his tone changing. I was like, well, yes, that's, that is why I submitted my, my portfolio and resume. And then he says, so, so how, how old are you? And he got super creepy. And then I, for some reason, answered him because I felt weird and on the spot. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good age. And I was like, all right, well, thank you. So I was doing another show at Studley once and it was one of the jazz shows and they're pretty high demand sound shows. And I was getting the stage ready and working with the musicians. And as I was coming back to get something from the board, one of the guys was like, hey, just want to let you know, you looked really hot today with your sunglasses and your leather jacket. And I just got so pissed off because I was there to work and that was just the end of it for the night. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be near this guy anymore. Just stuff like that is really distracting when you're working and it's just, it just shouldn't happen. So to get more women involved, we just need to show women, and even men, that women have been here, we are here, and we're going to continue to be here. And just having that representation of other women, I know for me personally, it's been really important. First examine who you are. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Once you've identified your weaknesses, spin that as a strength. In my early career, I thought, well, it might not be very good that I'm female. That might be bad, because I don't look like an engineer. 
so I'm gonna sell that as an asset. You're gonna want me, because I'm something different. You don't see that kind of car every day, to paraphrase Prince. You'll want me because I'm different. That's what I think all of us need to do. You want me because I'm this. That's what's good about me. Since starting this project, my friends and family always tell me when they see a woman running sound. I love it. Working on this project has been eye-opening. On the one hand, I learned a lot about the many women there are to thank for their inventions and influences on the industry. But on the other hand, I was not surprised by the low percentage of women in this field and the stories many of them have shared with me. Women still have a long way to go until sound person is the norm over sound guy, and we're not treated as less simply because of our gender. But we're getting there, and I'm excited to see what happens in the future of the industry.